A few years ago, the town of Lismore in New South Wales, Australia, had a major flood. Apart from all the damage, property loss and confusion, many people were left unable to use the internet and their mobile phone. Mobile towers shut down 24 hours or so after the power went out, as the batteries or generators ran out of fuel, and some people had to wait weeks to have communications restored. So I think this is a perfect situation where mesh tastic could be used to save the day. In this video, we'll make a mains powered node and a solar one. And then we'll put the solar one at the top of the hill, see what coverage we get in town. So you can see we've got a few parts here that we'll use to uh, build the node. I'm using a Raspberry Pi Pico, because they're easy to come by in Australia, and a Waveshare SX1262 radio. I'm also going to use an Alpha 915 megahertz omnidirectional aerial. It's an N-type, so we need a proper mounting, and it's just a standard five volt power supply. Start by preparing the container, drilling the holes for the power supply and for the antenna at the top. That's our Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, small board. If you order it with headers, you can just plug it straight into the WaveShare module and um, no soldering required. Our quality control department gives it a tick of approval. So time to mount it on a bit of core flute, uh, just to keep it off the back of the box. Uh, we're going to do some firmware, so we need to make sure there's an antenna plugged in so we don't burn the board out. To do the firmware, just hold the boot cell button down and plug into your computer and it will attach itself like a USB device. We're going to browse to flasher.meshtastic.org. Brings up a web page where we're going to select the board, in our case a Raspberry Pi Pico. We're going to select the version of firmware we want to download, then press flash. Right hand click on the file and save it to the newly mounted USB flash drive. Once that gets downloaded, the uh, Raspberry Pi will reboot. I'm going to plug the device into my Android tablet via the USB port at the bottom and um, connect and start to configure the device. First of all, we'll just give our device a name. Um, you can call it anything you like. And the other essential thing is on the right, you'll see that we need to set a region uh, in Australia, the region is ANZ, different regions for different parts of the world. I've already set this one to um, Australian, and that'll ensure you're broadcasting on the right frequency for the country that you live in. There it is with an N-type connector, piggy tail onto the board. Time to put on an antenna and take it outside and put it on top of the shed. There it is, looking pretty. Powered by the mains inside the shed. Time to build a solar node using a outdoor enclosure from Bunnings, as well as a five watt, five volt solar panel with a USB connector, also from Bunnings. I'm gonna stick with a Raspberry Pi for this one and um, the same wave share board as before. But to power it, we're gonna use a Voltaic Systems V25 battery which is unique in the fact that you can charge that directly by the solar panel and that it will not cut off with a low power draw like a Raspberry Pi. So perfect for this sort of situation. There it is mounted with the solar panel, ready to take it up and um, stick it on top of a hill. Time to walk up the hill. A little bit more overgrown than what I expected. There's a few comms towers up here already, but we're walking past them to get to an even higher point at the top of a quarry. It was a quarry, an old quarry a long time ago. Good views all over town, both sides. A few uh, dynamite uh, lockers that they use for blasting. That's about all that's left. Plus the remains of some old buildings. They're pretty much all fallen down now. Nice quiet spot to hide a repeater that you're not going to have someone come and find it accidentally. And there it is, bolted to an old telegraph pole that's no longer used. A little bit of the view. Got some trees blocking some of it, but um, didn't seem to make much difference with the reception. We still got good, good signal through town. Checked it on the way down to make sure that it was still working fine. Sent a test message. 
received a okay and this is what the coverage should look like a few of the low places around obviously we won't get any coverage or the sort of sheltered by the hills but most of the town should be able to pick it up and does have line of sight with the Meshtastic node. Even from the Macca's drive through, good signal, fast response. And heading towards Byron Bay, about 11.4 kilometers away, I still had a good successful connection to that node. That's it. Build a few more soon and I'll um I'll share them on YouTube as well. Thanks for sticking around.